So the first step of catabolism of amino acids, what is happening here? So in the first step, ammonia is removed and then carbon skeleton of amino acid enter into catabolic pathway such as gluconeogenesis and this carbon skeleton, it is also maybe useful in synthesis of non-essential amino acids apart from the gluconeogenesis by means of transamination. All non-essential amino acids which has to be synthesized by the body from keto acids are built from other sources. For example, pyruvate which is a keto acid which can be transaminated to synthesis because alanine will be coming from muscle to liver where the amino group will be removed it, it forms pyruvate. So again it can take up the amino group and it can form alanine. So this way it will work. Similarly, oxaloacetate produces aspartic acid based on the demand and alpha ketoglutarate is transaminated to form glutamic acid. So all these are like cycles right and all reversible reactions those amino acids which cannot be synthesized in this manner therefore essential okay so all non-essential amino acids may be synthesized via transamination reactions okay if this mechanism is not happening in production of a uh, few amino acids they are all essential in nature and which has to be provided in the diet so interconversion of amino acids like what to say 20 amino acids has to be there in equal amounts so if suppose if one amino acid concentration is high, other amino acid concentration is less. So via by utilizing the transamination reactions, the concentration of amino acid which is having low has to be raised to the higher level. Okay, so this way they will equalize the quantity of both amino acids which are in high and low concentration. So this is called equalization of quantities of non-essential amino acids. So only liver mitochondria contain glutamate dehydrogenase. So what I have to note down here? Deamination exclusively takes place in liver as this glutamate dehydrogenase present in mitochondria of liver cells. Okay. So here with the help of glutamate dehydrogenase, glutamic is undergo dehydrogenation to form alpha ketoglutarase and ammonia and this ammonia will be involved in urea cycle. Okay. So all amino acids are first transaminated to glutamate which is finally deaminated that is called transdeamination in case of uh, liver cells. Amino acids are deaminated at the rate of about for 50 to 70 grams per day. During the transamination reactions, the amino group of all other amino acids is funneled into glutamate. So here, the main transporters of uh, ammonia is amino acid glutamate and glutamine, okay, which are non-toxic form. Okay, here the glutamate dehydrogen reaction is final reaction, which removes amino group of all amino acids. It needs NAD as coenzyme. So in allosteric enzyme. It is activated by ADP and inhibited by GTP. The hydrolysis of glutamine also yields ammonia but this occurs mainly in kidney where the produced ammonia uh, converted as NH4 plus ammonium ions and they are important in uh, maintaining the acid base balance. L-amino acids. Yes, so far we have discussed about the mechanisms regarding the D-amino acids, um, uh, this one catabolism. So they do existence of allyl amino acids in nature. So how they will, they are also present in the diet. So how they will be undergoing catabolism. So L amino acid oxidase is the enzyme which presents. Okay. So what happens? This L amino acid oxidase act on all amino acids except hydroxyl group containing amino acids such as serine and threonine. Okay. And the coenzyme here is FMN. The peroxide formed in this reaction is decomposed by catalase in peroxisomes. D amino acid oxidase or oxidases can oxidized glycine and any D amino acid that may be formed by bacterial metabolism it uses FAD as coenzyme. So remember all our amino acids are L in nature okay so our body proteins contain L amino acids and but there is due existence of L amino acids okay in the diet from the plant sources and also from the bacterial metabolism. So how they will be metabolized? So the, there is a enzyme called D amino acid oxidase okay which catalyzes glycine and it requires a coenzyme FAD. Small quantities of ammonia may be formed in the body through minor reactions like oxidation of monoamines by monoamino oxidase. Okay, monoamine oxidase or monoamino oxidase. So small quantities of ammonia formed in the body through minor reactions like monoamines. So here L amino acid when you see, so how it will be converted finally to keto acid and involved in uh, keto body production. Okay, where FMN and FMNH2 will be there where uh, involvement of oxygen producing hydrogen peroxide which acted by the enzyme catalase present in the lysosomes which uh, uh, converts hydrogen peroxide into half O2 and then water molecule. So this way L-amino acid oxidase works. 
So apart from these transaminase enzymes, so there are enzymes which also involved in transaminations like in minor quantities, dehydratases, which are, as I told you, these uh, amino acid oxidases and transaminases which cannot be act on hydroxyl group containing amino acids, those especially threonine, uh, threonine and serine. So they do have special set of enzymes, dehydratases. So serine will give rise to pyruvate, uh, threonine will be converted to alpha ketobutyric acid. So same way sulfur containing amino acids like cysteine will be undergoing deamination in a similar way uh, to form transsulfuration to form pyruvate by desulfohydrases. Histidines also undergo non-oxidative deamination to form erocanic acid catalyzed by histidase. Ammonia may also be produced by degradation of purines and pyrimidines due to bacterial putrefaction in the gut. The anabolic reactions where proteins are synthesized. Okay, the synthesis of specialized products such as heme, creatine, purines and pyrimidines, the catabolic reactions where dietary proteins and body proteins are broken down to amino acids, transamination, the amino group is removed to produce the carbon skeleton, the amino group is uh, excreted uh, as urea, the carbon skeleton is used for sense of non-essential amino acids, it is also useful for gluconeogenesis for complete oxidation and finally amino acids are used for minor metabolic functions like conjugation reactions such as glycine involved in conjugation reactions, methylation, SAM methionine will be uh, used as a methyl donor uh, and amidation uh, making of polyamides. So all these are the functions uh, present in transamination reactions along with the free amino acids. So first step in catabolism of amino acid is to remove the amino group as ammonia. So the main purpose of uh, transamination reactions is not to allow free amino group as ammonia. Okay, so that is the main target of these transamination reactions. So the major source of ammonia is deamination and however small quantities of ammonia may also be formed from catabolism of purines and pyrimidine bases. Ammonia is highly toxic especially to nervous system when it is in free form. So that's why always there is a transamination reaction where this free ammonia will be taken up by the keto acids to form amino acids. So once they, these amino acids reach to the liver they undergo deamination to form free ammonia and this free ammonia will be known in urea cycle which can be easily excreted in the urine. So you see when you study the entire protein metabolism, so the end product of uh, protein metabolism is like amino acids, when they undergo degradation they form carbon skeleton, okay they undergo complete oxidation means gluconeogenesis involved in glucose production uh, and glucose undergo glycolysis TC cycle and completely oxidized and whatever the amino group is will be released as ammonia will be involved in production of urea and be excreted in urine. So the major excreted product in our urine is urea so that's why we are ureotelic. So when you coming talking about the histidine to urocanic acid and ammonia by histidase, aspartagine to aspartate uh, and uh, ammonia by aspartaginase, serine and threonine to pyruvate and alpha ketoabate respectively by dehydratases. Ammonia is also released during the purine nucleotide cycle and purine catabolism, uh, ADA and guanase and pyruvate catabolism. In the gut, ammonia is produced by bacterial metabolism which reaches the liver through portal vein. L amino acid oxidase is a flavor protein also releases ammonia from amino acids. Ammonia may also be produced in the gastrointestinal tract by bacterial putrefaction. The hydrolysis of glutamine to ammonia uh, and glutamate in kidney where ammonium ions excretion is required for acid base regulation. Cysteine undergoes deamination and simultaneous transsulfuration to form pyruvate to the enzyme uh, by the enzyme desulfohydrase. Ammonia may be formed in the body through minor reactions like oxidation of monamines. This all we have already discussed. So that's all about deamination mechanisms of other amino acids uh, compared with the glutamic acid and uh, alanine. Thanks for watching. Thank you.